Ahoy BD Fivers! Welcome to the BD5 Experimental Airplane Epic Adventure. It all started in 1971, now 50 years ago. The first BD5 prototype was introduced at Oshkosh by Jim Beatty, the designer. This gorgeous, sleek, fast, tiny little airplane was a huge sensation. The crowds went wild. Orders quickly poured in. While most aircraft companies would have been absolutely thrilled with 50 to 100 orders in their very first year, there were a staggering 4,300 orders initially made for the BD-5. For just $200 down and a base price of $1,950, you could actually buy your very own BD-5 kit. This sweet little all aluminum girl even got a full write up and centerfold in Playboy. Demand was just absolutely crazy. Sadly though, the BD-5's outstanding success was short lived. The massive number of orders only got partially filled and the growing pains only went from bad to worse. Originally, it was thought that the pusher drive system was easy to do. Unfortunately, Jim Beatty was forced to make large investments of time and money to finally solve huge torsional resonance problems in the unique BD-5 drive system engine combination. It was an unknown mystery at the time, you know, 50 years ago. On top of that, the well-established German engine manufacturer Hearth suddenly went bankrupt. What a complete disaster. Now a totally new engine for the BD-5 would have to be found, installed, and completely retested with the drive system. This took years, sending BD-5 kit production into a rapid, tight tailspin. Eventually, after several years, the Zeno engine was chosen and developed as a replacement, but by then it was just too late. Builders felt left out in the cold with no factory engine and as expected they got very frustrated and angry. Most simply stopped building their BD-5s altogether. Thousands of partially built kits were just dumped and sold at dirt cheap fire sale prices. Pioneers must be optimistic to forge ahead into the unknown and the ever optimistic Jim Beatty unfortunately also had overly optimistic business practices. Some of the $8 million from selling BD-5 kits got siphoned off into other new projects before complete BD-5 kits were all delivered to those paying customers. Chapter 11 bankruptcy put an official end to the BD Aircraft Corporation in 1978 and an FTC consent decree banned Jim Beatty from accepting any money for aircraft kits for 10 years. The BD-5 dream languished. Unfinished BD-5s were commonly for sale everywhere, really cheap. I could have bought a mostly finished BD-5 for only $200 way back then. It was sad. Many were simply stuck up on high posts for display or advertising. It's still very common to find a BD-5 on display at many museums for the kids to play in. I first saw the BD-5J in the famous opening scene of the 1983 James Bond movie Octopussy. The jet came out of a horse trailer and then flew away in a dramatic escape. Wow! Right then and there I was hooked. Looking around though there were still a lot of hard feelings and many negative comments about the BD-5. Some very intrepid build builders had forged ahead alone, damned the torpedoes, and had tried all sorts, all sorts of different engines. Most generally failed, or even died trying. Rumors quickly spread of this Widowmaker airplane, the complex BD-5, 
so complex that no one could ever possibly build it. Those were very dark days. Eventually, though, some sincere apologies and rave rev reviews were given for Jim Beatty's brilliant BD-5 design, as a few BD-5s actually started flying. The BD-5 did deliver high performance. Fighter pilots loved it. Also, a few new modern lightweight engines seemed to finally be catching up with the BD-5 design. These days, BD-5s have flown all over the world. The USA, Ireland, Canada, France, Germany, Australia, China, Spain, New, e New Zealand, Austria, and beyond. Eventually, I finally took the plunge and purchased my first BD-5 partially built kit on eBay, and my epic experimental airplane journey began. Fortunately, I also acquired a mentor, as the kit seller was none other than Arlo Haben. There is a lot to do, and it's pretty easy to feel overwhelmed at times. The BD-5 kit is not just a simple Lego set that you snap together perfectly. Where do you begin? Well, you have to divide and conquer, one assembly at a time, sometimes making one part from scratch multiple times using the full-scale BD-5 plans until it's all finally working together correctly. If you get stuck, then you really must start working on some other part just to keep the BD-5 ball rolling. It's experimental. It's a process. It's a long journey, not a sprint. In reality, there are around 4,500 rivets in a BD-5. It also generally takes about 3,000 hours to build one. That's full time, eight hours a day, five days a week for a year and a half, including that lavish international two week vacation to try to keep the wife happy. Too much playing and the wife will go insane. Just a helpful hint. Arlo showed me a very rough cut BD-5 home video collection made by Air Force mechanic Ron Paul Bickey Sr. Now Ron generally loved to tinker and could always and very frugally make something very useful out of nothing. Ron definitely had his own ideas about what he wanted his BD-5 to be and made some pretty radical modifications, especially to the nose. He would finish with his calm, OK, back to work slogan, while many determined builders took three to five years to build a fairly standard BD-5, Ron spent only nine months to finish his wildly custom Thunder BD. And then again later, his second Micromig BD um, using partially built kits. Ron carefully explained various build aspects in his calm, straightforward Midwest fashion. He'd say, well, the BD-5 plans are really just guidelines. And then he'd casually state that and show a quicker, better building method that accomplished some fairly difficult task. A fellow could do it like this was also his common phrase. It was like the warm sun coming out after a long, cold, hard winter. Seeing Ron's matter of fact, practical, no-nonsense approach was truly enlightening. Ron's home videos were just the inspiration I really needed to move my own BD-5 project forward. Tragically, Ron Paul Bickey Sr. died in 1991 of a heart attack while flying his Mini MiG. Rest in peace, Ron. Almost 30 years later, out of the blue, I was given the chance to purchase the video rights from the Paul Bickey family. I jumped at the opportunity and began sifting through and reorganizing 
Ron's hours upon hours of raw footage, helpful tips, and instruction. The many hours of footage were not in a particular order, so finding these gems of information for something that you were building and working on was like trying to find a needle in a haystack. A fella could fix that. So I did. The goals of this edited video series are to help guide and inspire you throughout your BD5 build and help you realize that you actually can create your own custom version of a BD5 to tailor fit your own dreams. It is now a whole lot easier to find many of Ron's jewels of inspiration and wonderful tips in this newly edited and condensed version. I have organized his tips and comments into the same order of the BD5 plans for quick, easy reference. Hopefully, this will save many BD5 builders hundreds of hours of build time and also add confidence, add independence, and inspire them to push through and actually finish their very own iconic BD5 airplane. The crowd still go wild whenever they see a real BD-5 fly. Get ready. You will be an airport rock star. Crowds will surround you with sheer amazement and wonder how you even fly that tiny little thing. My favorite question was, is it radio controlled? <laughs> well, as Ron would say, okay, Back to work. <laughs>